Greetings. I'm Paul Erickson, Bishop of the Greater Milwaukee Synod. Welcome to this worship service, recorded in mid-December for congregational use on Sunday, January 3rd. This service highlights our global companion relationship with the Diocese of Meru in the Lutheran Church in Tanzania. I recorded a conversation with Bishop Elias Kitoy Nasari, in which we hear news about our siblings in Christ in that beautiful country, and we have a conversation about the first chapter of John's Gospel. We also highlight some of the many beautiful Christmas music offerings made available to us in this time of virtual celebrations. We pray that this service will deepen our understanding of what it means to be church together for the sake of the world, granting us peace and hope in the knowledge that we do not face the challenges of this age alone. The gift of Emmanuel, God with us, unites us with our siblings in Christ across the street and around the world, that together we might proclaim peace on earth, goodwill to all. Good morning, Bishop Kitoy. It is so good to see you and to hear you and to be with you in this time. I'm grateful for the gift of technology um, that allows us to connect. It is early in the morning here in Milwaukee and late in the afternoon um, in Tanzania. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for being You're with welcome. us today. Yes. You're welcome, Bishop. So Bishop Kitoy, how are you? How are the people of the Diocese of Meru faring in these very challenging days? Bishop, 
Erickson, we give thanks to God. God has been so merciful to us in this poor country uh, called Tanzania. Uh, our people are doing really well, extremely well during this time. Uh, these are the times when our people are so joyous. Uh, they, they looked really good because of the weather, because of uh, the rains have come down, the, 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 the flocks, the animals are doing well. Uh, people in the northern part are harvesting. They are eating corn in the cob right now. So it's, and there are lots of celebrations as I will allude later in my conversation. So we are really doing very well. And on top of, of that, um, we, we uh, would I say that we are COVID-19 free by the grace of God, whereas our neighbors are really struggling, really struggling with that. Our neighbors being Kenya, Uganda, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, Malawi. So we are really lucky by the grace of God. We are doing well as far as that pandemic is concerned. Well, thank you. That is good. Good to hear. We've seen yes. pictures uh, of the coffee harvest that was taking place. We received yes. many uh, photographs from those who work with the coffee project, um, and it seemed yes. like it was a very, very uh, bountiful harvest. So it yes. takes a long period of time to do the harvesting and the processing and the shipping and the roasting um, before we can actually enjoy uh, the coffee uh, that we uh, love to drink in the morning. It surely does. But thank you so much for buying Mount Meru coffee and drinking it. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Sante sana. Karibu uh, sana. Um, I'm curious about international travel. Uh, yes. My imagination is that there has been a significant decrease in the number of people and tourists traveling to Tanzania. And that's a significant um, part of the economy. How is that? Has that is that still low? Has it gone back up? How is that these days? Very low, extremely low, Bishop. Yes. Yeah, in, in one part, there was hope after, I think this is, this was after October. It was announced in Europe and America that there was a glimpse of hope that people were allowed to travel. And all of, of a sudden, after in November, uh, then the pandemic came back again, both in, um, in, the, in America and in Europe. And then that door did close down totally. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there are a few tourists who are taking a leap of faith, I call it, to travel yet. But it's a very small percentage mm -hmm. of those who were hurt. As you know, I just heard uh, some few days ago, Bishop, that our economy is depends on 25% of our income, foreign income, depends on tourism industry. And therefore, the country has suffered a blow to that. But not only that, our churches have greatly, greatly suffered a big blow that we didn't know. So most of our parishioners who are doing tourism industry are at, at home. These are people who used to have money in their wallets mm -hmm. and now they have none. Not only do they have none in their wallets, they have none to bring to church. Right. So this has greatly affected not only our country's economy, but our church as well. Mm. Let us pray. Almighty and heavenly Father, the one who comes to us through our Son, your Son, Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for this uh, Christmas time and uh, as well as we continue to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Bless us. And may your light come to us as we struggle in many ways. 
with the COVID-19 and maybe with the cold weather in America, but with uh, the bright sunshine in Tanzania. Connect us as your people, Faith, and may our connection be clear during this communication. In your holy name we pray, amen. Hapo mwanzo kulikuwako neno. Nae neno alikuwako kwa mungu. Nae neno alikuwa mungu. Hayo mwanzo alikuwako kwa mungu. Vyote vilifanyika kwa hayo. Wala pasipo yeye akikufanyika chochote kilichofanyika. Dani yake ndimo ulimo kuepo uzima. Na ule uzima ulikuwa nuru ya watu. Na yo nuru ya nga gizani wala giza halikuweza. Palitokea mtu alietumo kutoka kwa mungu. Jina lake Yohana. Huyo alikuja kwa ushuda. Ili aishudia ile nuru. Wote wapate kwa mini kwa yeye. Huyo hakuwa ile nuru. Bali alikuja ili aishudia ile nuru. Kulikuwa kwa nuru halisi amtiae nuru kila mtu akija katika ulimwengu. Alikuwepo ulimwenguni hata kwa yeye ulimwengu ulipata kuwako. Wala ulimwengu hau kumtambua. Alikuja kwake. Wala walio wake hau kumpokea. Bali wote walio mpokea aliwapa uwezo wa kufanyika watoto wa Mungu ndio wale waliaminio jina lake walio zaliwa si kwa damu wala si kwa mapenzi ya mwili wala si kwa mapenzi ya mtu bali kwa mapenzi ya Mungu naye neno alifanyika mwili akakaa kwetu nasi tukaona utukufu wake utukufu kama wa mwana pekee atokaye kwa baba amejaa neema na kweli. Yohana alimshuhudia kapaza sauti yake akisema, "Huyu ndiye aliyenena habari zake ya kwamba ajaye nyuma yangu amekuwa mbele yangu, kwa maana alikuwa kabla yangu. Kwa kuwa katika utimilifu wake sisi sote tulipokea na neema juu ya neema. Kwa kuwa Torati ilitolewa kwa mkono wa Musa neema na kweli zilikuja kwa mkono wa Yesu Kristo. Hakuna mtu alie muona Mungu wakati wowote. Mungu mwana pekee alie katika kifua cha baba. Huyu ndiye alie mtuma. Amen. As you uh, reflect on those powerful words from the beginning of John's gospel, um, what part of that <laughs> passage uh, strikes you as, as uh, relevant or interesting at this point in your life and in your ministry? Mm. Wow, that's a good question, Bishop. Uh, to me, it's the light, the light which has come to the world. That's one word. The second word is the light which has given way to life. These two are so important to me as I look outside now. The, the skies are very clear. The blue sky is very clear. And later on in the night, the stars are so shining. So you can see the light even without electricity electricity and that gives me the, the, the sense of what John is writing Jesus is the light of the world and therefore the second word is life that light gives way to life and during this same time as I said earlier Bishop uh, people are, are, are smiling the, if you look at their faces, they are full of life because at least the weather allows that. And, and you know, 
the flowers are shining, are flowering, everything is green, green I'm sorry, the, tree, the Christmas trees are blossoming, uh, the bougainvilleas have all their, all the colors of the flowers on. So you can see, you can see life on people's faces. You can see life even on our vegetations. You can see life even in our animals that we keep because there's grass, there's animal feed, there's food at least this time. Yeah, those are the two words. Thank you. And as you spoke, I uh, was drawn to the, the phrase um, about John the Baptist coming, right? Yes, and yes. there was the light that was coming into the world. And it says about John the Baptist, he himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world, which is, for me, a word of grace. I don't have to, you don't have to, we don't have to create the light, right? We don't have to generate the light. All we have to do is reflect the light and point others to the light, right? Because Jesus Christ is someone who comes to us and, and shows up, whether we are ready or not, whether we try to have our rituals of Christmas or not. Yes. That's one of the things that is so, I think, profoundly challenging for our people is that so many of the traditions and rituals that have brought joy and hope to this Christmas season for generations were, un were unavailable to us, right? Many people were not allowed to travel to visit family mm. um, and come together and share gifts under the tree and have a large meal because large gatherings have been discouraged. Um, and so those things that we think bring us light and love and hope are not available to us. But we proclaim and we trust that the light still finds its way in, right? Um, the darkness is strong, but the light is stronger. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. That is one of the most powerful sentences in all of scripture, a sentence that I have uh, returned to time and time and time again. Uh, when there are challenges that might seem large and impossible to figure out or small and dealing with only my family. The challenges are many. Yes. Um, life is filled uh, with times in which uh, the light might be hard to see, but it's there. Yeah. Um, and we need to follow yeah. the light and trust in the light because it reveals to us the path that we are to walk. And I like that verse too. It's so powerful. Yes. Yes. One of the things, of course, is to note that um, as you have spent time in our area, um, when you are in the city, uh, there are so many artificial lights, right? Yes. That you can't see many stars. Exactly. So the only way you can really experience the stars is by getting away from uh, the city and out uh, where there isn't the human created light, but that we can see the heavenly light breaking into our world. I did mean um, not that, Bishop. You're yeah. very right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so, what is one thing in this period, in this time um, in in Tanzania, that gives you? What is one thing that gives you hope in this in this challenging time? Yeah. One would say eating food. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because as I said <clears throat> earlier. Uh, there's lots of eating. There are celebrations all over, uh, being baptism, uh, confirmation. This is the confirmation time. Hmm. And uh, like this Sunday, I'm going to confirm 140 uh, uh, conformants. Amen. And this is not a, a peculiar story. Uh, most of the congregations are doing that. These are times when the young people are doing their weddings and, and all that. So it's, there's lots of eating. Mm. But one thing which doesn't uh, stop us from celebrating Jesus, who is the reason of Christmas, is we go beyond the celebrations. At every celebration that we do, we pray. And most of the prayers, the, the common prayers are 
Jesus, we have fed us with this physical food. Come to us during this time of Christmas to feed us and to continue feeding us with our spiritual food. So I guess we are moving, the, the, the most interesting thing is how people can gear, uh, shift the gears, I'm sorry, or how people can shift the gears from food, which is plentiful by now, and the weather is wonderful, as I said, uh, from the physical food to the spiritual food. Uh, I'm, uh, that's one thing which excites me. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. One of the, the, the things that always has given me um, hope and joy in life has been music. And um, our, our, um, it's been really challenging in this pandemic time because so many of the choirs um, are not able to sing in the same way that they have been singing because with the airborne nature of the virus, singing in large groups has been uh, greatly discouraged. Um, but we have found a way. There are many times that some people are doing these uh, drive-in services and doing a hymn sing. So people are singing in their cars, so they are safe, but they can sing. There are some uh, choirs that have put together these online videos of people singing individually and recording it, and then they combine them all together to form a beautiful, beautiful choir. Um, and I think the other way that we can recognize is that our denomination has recently published a new hymnal supplement called All Creation Sings. Um, wow. And we recognize one, that even though our voices might be, uh, we can't sing in the way that we're used to, I but know. yet all of creation joins in songs of praise to God on high. Um, the song will find a way, just like light will find a way. Um, <laughs> as they said to uh, Jesus, as he was, uh, you know, if you silence my disciples, the stones themselves will yeah, cry out. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. God's song will find a way. God's light will find a way. Um, and that is the gift. That is a gift of Christmas um, that we celebrate now that Jesus um, is coming. He has come. He is coming and he will come again. So we give thanks to God for that. I give thanks to God for our partnership because I experience yeah. Christ in you yeah. and in the yeah. people of the Diocese of Mary. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so we. And go ahead. We, we do the same here. If you take away singing yes. in our churches, uh, probably you don't have the church. Mm. And, and after all, we are Lutherans, aren't we? Yes. We sing. We sing. And we yeah. eat. We do eat. Yes. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bishop Kitoy, so much uh, for spending you're, this time with me. Uh, we are grateful for our partnership. We are grateful for your ministry. Um, it is so good to hear of the joy and the life and the, the new confirmands and the new people uh, who are experiencing the love of Christ uh, through the Diocese of Mayo and through all the churches and all the people of Tanzania. And, and, and to you, Bishop, and uh, the brothers and sisters at the Great Milwaukee Synod, we pray unceasingly. Every time that we gather, we remember you our brothers and sisters in our prayers we have been one in christ so there is nothing that can separate us from the love of god amen to that amen oh,
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For a more complete appreciation of the gift of the incarnation. That in astonishing humility, the transcendent Son of God took on our fragile and limiting flesh and lived among us, entering and embracing the fullness of the human story that our brokenness would be redeemed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gift of the Christian church and its mission, that you would renew our fellowship, increasing our mutual love, that we would be a more revealing glimpse of your love for the world, enrich our partnerships around the world, especially those with the Diocese of Meru, that we would be strengthened by one another and rejoice together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gift of our communities, our institutions, our governments, that you would continue to work through these human means to enrich the human family. We pray especially for our elected officials, that they would govern with justice and cooperation, and for medical workers and researchers, that they would meet the challenge of the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gift of sharing one another's burdens, that we would have the privilege of fulfilling the law of Christ. Give the refreshment of your healing spirit to those who are weak in body or soul, those hospitalized and in care facilities, those who are lonely or struggling with difficult relationships, those facing financial hardship and those facing difficult decisions, and those we name before you now. Open our eyes to these needs and guide us into ways that we can bring blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gift of the new year, that this simple turn of the human calendar would renew our faith that you are a God who makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gift of the faithful who have gone before us and now rest in Christ that even as we feel these losses more keenly during the Christmas season, we would feel the blessing of these lives more keenly as well, and that we would have our hope renewed by a more certain faith in your promise of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Baba yetu uliye mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe ufalme wako uje mapenzi yako yatimizwe hapa duniani kama yanavyotimizwa mbinguni utupeleo riziki yetu utusamehe makosa yetu kama sisi nasi tunavyowasamehe wale tukosea ustutie majaribuni lakini utuokoe na ule Mungu kwa ufalme ni wako na nguvu na utukufu sasa na hata milele Amen. Good and gracious God. Thank you. Thank you for the gift of technology that allows us to connect to one another across the miles, across the continents. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that connects us through baptism with our siblings in Christ in the Diocese of Meru and around the world because we recognize that even though our languages are, are different, our songs are different, our food may be different, we are one in spirit with you mm. and with one another because love gives us hope. Love shines the light that helps us see where to walk. So grant us that grace that we might experience your love and your light, your grace, your hope and your mercy today and tomorrow and every day into the new year. Bless us through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Asante sana Yesu. Asante Thank sana. You. Asante sana.